Hey, how you doing, YouTube? I'm back with another video, and today I'm gonna talk about why the Indiana Pacers could potentially make the NBA Finals. Now, I'm not saying they will make the NBA Finals. I'm not saying they're going to make the NBA Finals or nothing like that. I'm not saying they're going to win the NBA Finals. I'm actually not even an Indiana Pacers fan. I'm actually a Pelicans fan. I mean, I say that just in case you're new to this channel, and there are a couple new guys to this channel, so I feel like I gotta get that out of the way before you try to call me a bandwagon for the Pacers. And now, yes, I know most likely the Warriors will be winning the NBA Finals this year, despite any injuries to happen to them but I mean I'm be giving some reasons why I think potentially the Indiana Pacers could be able to make it out of the East and into the NBA Finals so without further ado without rumming on too much let's get right into this video Alright, so my first reason for this video is going to be that they were able to add a solid point guard to the roster with the addition of Aaron Holiday, and they added him through the draft, and one of, in my opinion, he has the potential to be one of the best guards in this entire league. Now, last year, he did have decent guards to play alongside with Darren Collis and Corey Joe. I mean, they had just decent point guards for him to play alongside, but I think Aaron Holiday could be a potential steal of this draft, and I mean, he probably has the potential to be one, one of the best, if not the best, out of all the Holiday brothers. And as you know, the Holiday brothers consist of, I think, Justin Holiday and then Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday was on the All Defense team and was a um, previous All Star back in his career. And I think Aaron Holiday has the potential to be better than both of them. Not combined with both of them, I think. As in college, he showed that he could be a great scorer. He's very explosive and he's a very good defender. So he's pretty much a mix of what them two are. But he's a mix of all that and just by himself. And like, he's pretty much he does what them two can do. But he does it like at once. Like they do, like Drew Holiday defends an explosive and can score. Justin Holiday is more of a scorer. And I mean, he can do all of that, but like he does it all. Like he, he doesn't have really a lack. And he showed that as he was able to average 20.3 points per game, 3.7 rebounds per game, 5.8 assists per game to go along with 1.3 steals per game last year in college for the US UCLA Bruins last year. And I mean, that he's a very good defender. And I mean, you can see that if they did add this, they would have one of the best defensive backcourts in the entire league. I mean, look what they would have. They'd have Victor Oladipo, who last year was on the all-defensive first team last year. And then Aaron Holiday, a very good defender who can lock down anyone he is on. A very explosive, very athletic, can score, can like get fast breaks. So not only will their defense improve in the backcourt, but I mean, also their their pace is going to improve because the more steals you get, the more fast breaks you get, the more fast breaks you get, the more pace you go, and the higher your pace, the more successful you are. As we've seen teams like Houston, Golden State, and the Pelicans, all three of those teams, very pretty successful teams. Obviously, Houston and Golden State very successful, and they ran at the two highest paces in the N NBA last year. So, I mean, obviously, the higher the pace, most likely the better you are going to be. And I mean, if you can get more steals and fast breaks, that is a very good way to pick up your pace. And I think Aaron Holiday will be a very, very good thing to do that with. And I just overall think that he is going to be a very nice addition to their team and could be a steal of the draft. My second reason is going to be their three-pointer will improve. Now, what I mean by this is last year, they weren't a very good three-point shooting team as they were ranked the fifth worst team in the NBA for points from the three-pointer per game. Now, what this means is like they weren't scoring many three-pointers or they just weren't getting a lot of points off three-pointers per game and I mean that is actually very bad for a NBA team as obviously in this NBA or this era of the league you have to be able to shoot threes look at all the best teams Golden State the Cavs were in the finals last year they could shoot a three Houston Rockets Boston Celtics I mean if you want to be successful you have to be able to shoot a three and that was a bigger reason why the um Philadelphia 76ers failed yes they had shooters like Bar Marco Bellinelli JJ Redick but they didn't have any elite scorers or three-point shooters on their team like the other teams I mentioned prior did and that was a reason why they fell so I mean with that lack of shooting Indiana really struggled to keep up with the scoring of the Cleveland Cavaliers and that's mainly why they lost that seven game series but now that they were with the additions of Tyreek Evans and Doug McDermott I mean that, that's going to improve their three pointers by a lot as I mean Tyreek Evans had one of the best years of his career last year as he averaged 40% from the three and he attempted five per game and I mean all of that to go wrong in fact that he was able to average 19 points per game I mean he almost averaged 20 points Per game he did it extremely efficiently and can shoot the three so that's going to be a huge addition to their three-point game and be able to have like more success and spread the floor even more but then Doug McDermott now he's not a beast of a player he's not going to take over a game but he will be a nice bench player to get you nine to ten points per game as I mean he's a very good shooter you might not be able to do much else but he's an extremely extremely solid shooter as in the last 26 games of the season where he was with the Dallas Mavericks he was able to average nine points per game which isn't good but he did it on 
50% shooting from the three. Now, I don't know if you know how extremely efficient that is, it is extremely efficient. Just like, just know, like 50% from three is very good. Now, yes, he did not start all those games, but he did play in all 26 of those games. So, I mean, the fact that he was able to shoot 50% from the three while attempting at least four three pointers per game, that is unbelievable. I mean, the dude can score at a very efficient rate. Maybe he can't score in volume good, but efficiently he will be good for about five to nine points per game off your bench, which you can't really get mad at if you're an NBA team. You need those type role players on your roster to be successful. But my third reason is going to be kind of going out on a limb a little bit. Miles Turner could have a breakout year next year. Now, this year was supposed to be Miles Turner's breakout year to become an elite center and it looked like he was going to be able to do that but with the addition of Victor Oladipo and how much of the offense then went through Oladipo how much he just took over it, Miles Turner kind of had a very hard time adjusting to being able to play with Oladipo but now that this will be their second full season together most if, assuming they stay healthy he'll be able to mesh with them and he'll probably still have a pretty good year and but now with that they have that chemistry maybe he'll be able to play alongside him a lot more efficiently and have that breakout year that a lot of people were expecting him to have last year now, I mean, even last year, he didn't have a bad season as he was still able to average 12 points per game, two blocks per game, and 6.4 assists per game. So he's still a very good rim protector. He can pass the ball pretty efficiently for a center. And I mean, he can score the ball, but I mean, you'd like to see him score a little bit more and get a few more rebounds per game. And But his rim protection is still elite level. But now my fourth and final reason for this video is going to be that they are in the East. Now what I mean is like, obviously the East is nowhere near as strong as what the West is right now, but they still have some strong teams. Like they have the Boston, they have Toronto Rams, Raptors, they have um, the Philadelphia 76ers, but then after you look at that, all right, so those three teams, it's kind of a toss-up to who you could potentially win the NBA Finals or come out of the East, as I mean, Indiana, the Wizards, uh, I'm missing, Milwaukee Bucks, there's a lot of other teams, I think I already said the Washington Wizards, but there's a lot of other teams in the East that, I mean, it's a complete toss-up to see how good they're going to be able to do in the East this year, and I mean... I wouldn't be surprised if the Pacers are able to come out of the East. I mean, they almost beat the the uh, team that made it out of the East last year in the first round in the Cleveland Cavaliers. They came very, very close to beating them. And if it wasn't for a buzzer beater by LeBron, they might have beat him. They actually probably would have beaten him in the first round, which would have been an extremely, extremely big upset. And I mean, Oladipo has said it himself. He fears no one. He doesn't care if it's a one seed. He doesn't care if it's an eight seed. He's going to play them the same way. He's not scared of them. And I mean... I just can see like them coming out of the East very, very easily. As I mean, they can beat Boston. I mean, I'm not saying they will. I know Boston's the more talented, better team. But I mean, I think it's potential that they could beat Boston. Philly, I mean, if they can somehow slow down Ben Simmons and have Miles Turner on Joel Embiid, who's a good defender, they can slow down Joel Embiid. They hope they can slow down Ben Simmons. Boom, they could beat Philly. Toronto, that's going to be a struggle just because of how beastly Kawhi Leonard is. Kawhi Leonard is on a whole no another level. Top three player in the NBA, in my opinion. I mean, I don't know how it's going to be from the injury, but I mean, he is a top three player as of right now in my head. I mean, so they're going to be kind of a struggle to beat. But besides those three teams, in two of the three, I think they wouldn't have that big of a problem beating. I could definitely see them getting out of the East, but unfortunately, that's going to be the first video. So comment below. Do you think they could, any of the Pacers could make the finals? Do you think they're going to go to the East? How far do you think they're going to make the playoffs? How far do you think they're going to go into the playoffs? I want to hear all your thoughts and opinions below. Do you think my Turners could have a breakout year next year? I want to hear literally all your thoughts and opinions below. And also, I want to thank y'all so, so much for all the support y'all have been showing on, this, on the channel lately. Yeah, there's a love in so many new subscribers so many old subscribers staying loyal so many just so much support being shown on the channel and i cannot thank y'all enough y'all are helping me go through with my dream and i mean i just love making these videos for y'all and as long as y'all are loving them i'm gonna keep loving and making them and i'm gonna keep grinding for y'all and i'm trust me i will not let y'all down on that promise but and i hope you have a blessed day because i had a blessed day so y'all need to have a blessed day and if you did like me at any point like button and subscribe button it would mean the world to me see you tomorrow's video goodbye Boo. Blah, 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 blah.